What is up, watch fam? I'm Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. And today I'm going to be talking about the rise, fall, and future of Tag Heuer. Boom, watch fam. Today, I'm wearing an Explorer 2 reference 16570, lovely watch, uh, great condition, very thick oyster case. Uh, it, I'm not unworn, but I'd say hardly ever worn. Um, this watch is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop, along with a ton more vintage Rolex Cartier. I'd say one of the best watches in the shop right now is the pair of Rolex 5513s, no date Submariners, beautiful, very even tritium plots. Those are two watches uh, with this Explorer as well. Phenomenal, just two different things um, that I highly recommend you take a closer look at, even if just for fun. So let's get into Tag Heuer. Tag Heuer, like Movado, flourished in the 90s. Their marketing was well received and despite their generally pedestrian watches, they built a luxury brand in the mainstream. I even remember being a child looking at Tag Heuer, let's say in the you know, mid 2000s as a bit holy. I mean, something akin to a Rolex. So yes, Tag Heuer carved out a position for themselves as a luxury Swiss manufacturer. But beyond the conventional knowledge, is the emperor naked? A luxury brand needs an identity, something that Tag Heuer is without. In watching their releases, we are routinely observing what seems to be three completely different brands. The first is Heuer, which breathes fresh air into the models of the 60s and 70s, the watches that first established Hoyer as a cultural force. Hoyer makes the Monaco. Hoyer made the Ottavia in 2017. And Hoyer doesn't just make reissues, they build on their heritage. They believe in the logical evolution of their model lines. Take this Carrera, for example. Certainly not plucked from the 60s or 70s, but it shares enough in common with the Carrera family to bear the same name. This collection was reborn in 1996 when Tag Heuer released this somewhat Monza heritage chronograph. But when LVMH made Jack Heuer, who was forced to sell the company in 1982, the honorary chairman when they took over the company, that was the solidifying moment. LVMH made it clear that the Heuer heritage would forever inform their collection. It would be present in the new era of Tag Heuer. And to put things into perspective, to show you how ahead and forward thinking LVMH was, it wasn't until 2013 that Longines did the same thing, which was around the same time Tudor relaunched with the same idea, which was again around the same time Audemars Piguet made the same decision. Incorporating heritage into a collection moving forward. LVMH saw the value of that before nearly anyone else. The next of the brand's three identities is Tag, which the brand referred to themselves as their rebirth. Tag produces pieces without personality, mainstream watches with designs that have evolved from their awkward era. Tag started with their Series 2000 in 1985 and reached its height with the Sports and Elegance collection, which was later renamed The Link. This era of Tag brought a new image. Tag, unlike Hoyer, was about luxury. Even their popular advertisement at the time read, success, it's a mind game, which sounds a hell of a lot like vintage Rolex ads. As you can see, they are completely unrelated to their history. Their best model, and I don't mean in quality necessarily, but rather purpose, is their Aqua Racer, which is an affordable submariner alternative with social clout. It's probably a cash cow for the brand. But while it doesn't offend, it misses. Instead of taking cues from Hoyer's long history at sea, like their Margraf or their Skipper, Tag chose to make the Aqua Racer, like the rest of the Tag collection, generic. Finally, the third identity, something I call Jean-Claude Tag. It's the brand's newest style, introduced in its current form by the brand's former CEO, Jean-Claude Beaver. 
Jean-Claude Tag is all about innovation, exploring new technology, finishing, uh, and materials, and doing so in a very young and hip way. But the first piece in this collection's history actually predates Jean-Claude Beaver. In 2004, the brand introduced their Monaco V4, one of the first big moves under LVMH. The watch featured the world's first belt-driven transmission as opposed to a traditional gear train, and it was the first Tag Heuer to embody sport, specifically motorsport, in a thoughtful way since the brand's golden era. Today, Jean-Claude Tag makes up a substantial portion of the brand's current collection. And while they're not my personal style, I love them. I think they're a terrific reflection of the current state of the sports aesthetic. Tag Heuer is delivering in that space, which is now becoming a, a substantial space, and I think that will become even bigger with time, more value than almost any other brand. Maybe uh, Zenith comes in second and by a bit of a margin. But, and, and here's where it gets really interesting, Jean-Claude Tag goes a bit further. Think about it. If they're going to be a sports watch company, isn't it their job to manufacture the best sports watches technology would allow? And that is how they've arrived in the smartwatch category. We as watch enthusiasts may not like it, but today smartwatches are proper sports watches. Their complications are unlimited and accuracy unparalleled. Not only is their connected line able to track data to help you with golf, running, cycling, and any other forms of fitness, but it also allows the company to consistently improve the functions of your watch. Unlike Apple, who has been found guilty of slowing down their old products, Frederick Arnault, the brand's chief strategy and digital officer, even went so far in a recent interview with GQ to explain that Tag Heuer is committed to improving each model throughout its life by updating software. And they can even track consumer satisfaction by actually monitoring the use of the watches, not just relying on online forums or customer reviews. They're able to cater to the customer, to improve the complication and functionality of the sports watch even after sale. That's brilliant. That's the future of the sports watch category. As I'm sure you can tell, I am extremely impressed with this identity in the Tag Heuer collection, while it might be one of the collections you'd be least likely to find on my wrist. But let's get back to my point. The Tag Heuer catalog is split into three completely different, unrelated identities. The collection needs a golden thread to tie the brand together. Because without that thread, you have a disjointed offering. You have no identity. You become a brand that is willing to sell anything to survive. And that's not luxury. A brand that will stand for anything stands for nothing. Now, as all of you know, I generally will not criticize a brand or anything without offering up a solution of my own. So how would I fix Tag Heuer? First, we'll talk about marketing and then the model line. I would engage in more campaigns that targeted watch enthusiasts, not just the mainstream. That's how Tudor was reborn. I'd partner with creators and publications in the watch space to tell my story and share it with the internet. I would prove my chops to the community. I would explain my hard work and I would earn their respect. And no, Patrick Dempsey can't help here. Now, the product line. The old and the new, you know, Hoyer and Jean-Claude Tag can coexist, especially with intersection. A Carrera paired with a smart strap, similar to the one employed by Frédéric Constant, that could monitor activity and sleep, would be a great start, a perfect meeting of the two worlds, like I said before, that golden thread throughout the collection. Alternatively, even a classically styled Otavia chronograph, but reimagined, brought into modernity with alternative materials, interesting materials like uh, titanium ceramic or even uh, sapphire for some sort of you know piece unique kind of run that's the path forward that's the way to marry these two very separate identities to make them complementary to to make them one brand if tag heuer is to be a respected manufacturer of luxury tool watches every decision they make every watch they produce and sell needs to be in pursuance of that goal 
Now, would I be arrogant enough to kill off some of my best sellers because they don't align with my vision for the future of the brand? No, probably not, at least not immediately. I mean, the whole point of this is to make money, right? So yeah, I'm sure that I would continue to make the little ladies diamond uh, accented Carreras as much as I hate the idea of that under the Tag Heuer umbrella. But there is plenty of work to be done before we even have to cross that bridge. We can trim the fat last. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I had a blast recording it. Uh, I'm actually like all of a sudden like really passionate about Tag Heuer now. So Tag, uh, if you're watching and I'm sure you are, um, I see a super bright future for you guys. You have so much going and I'm really excited uh, to be witnessing it. And um, I'm sure at some point in the near future be involved with it. Uh, again, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to Theo and Harris if you love watches and like this video if you did. More importantly than any of that, comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts. Maybe I made some gross uh, miscalculations here. So I'd love to hear them. See you all soon.